This is the story of the happiest day of my life, July 24th, 2015. During my sophomore year of high school, I became fascinated with the concept of urbexing. I discovered a place in Bulgaria called Bezlidja. It's a very striking building. It looks like a UFO that just landed in front of a tower on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. And ever since the regime fell, ever since communism fell in Eastern Europe, the building has been abandoned and has been explored by locals and travelers alike. I would tell people in high school, I'm going to go to this building someday. I'm going to find out what it feels like to be there. And most people were kind of asking me why I wasn't planning to go to Paris or to go to Rome. I wasn't as interested in going to those places. I want to go, and I wanted at the time as well, to go to weird places. So in the summer of 2015, I went to Europe and I traveled around all over the continent for a month and a half, maybe two months before I finally got to Bulgaria. God damn it. I stayed in a hostel in the city of Veliko Tarnovo. I believe it was the uh, second or third day, maybe the fourth that I was staying in the hostel. I woke up and went downstairs for breakfast and I ran into a friend of mine named Darius. I had met him in Budapest in Hungary I didn't know that he was there, so I was really excited to see him, and I was asking him, you know, Darius, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I'm here for the tour, the tour to Bazlodja. Is that today? Are they going today? Is there any room? And he said, yeah, yeah, there's room, but you have to sign up now because we're leaving in like 15 minutes. Within half an hour, we were on the road. We were on the road to Bazlodja. And that's where the story kind of gets unusual. I was in a Toyota 4Runner from the 80s or 90s with Andy, Darius, a man from India, a man from France, and a woman who I believe was from Canada. It was at that moment that I stopped and I thought, I'm not sure if Bazlidja can live up to what I'm expecting. After about half an hour on the highway, we were crisscrossing into smaller and smaller roads until we finally got into a fork in the road. One of the forks was a paved road. It went off into a local town and the other one was a dirt road that very clearly went into the mountains. And Andy said, we're taking the dirt road. We had to take a dirt road for over an hour in the Balkan mountains to reach Bezlidja. That's how remote it was. There weren't enough seats for all of us. So Darius actually sat behind the seats in the back, like in the storage area of the vehicle. The pads were not very comfortable. They were very rocky, very up and down, and we kept checking on Darius and he said he was okay, but after a while I decided, you know what, I'm gonna sit back there with you in solidarity. So I hopped back behind the seats and we're both just bouncing around, and at one point I looked out the window, I looked down, and I see nothing. It was cliff sides that we were carefully straddling, and then something happened. We are going back and forth on this road. If you've ever been on mountain roads, in order to climb a mountain, you tend to have to kind of take these very sharp turns back and forth to go up slowly. And on one of the turns, so we're going up, we take this turn, we're going up, and the truck starts to slide. Its wheels lose traction and it starts to just slide backwards. And everyone starts to panic. Even Andy was panicking, the driver, which that didn't come for me because he had been doing this for a long time. Darius and I, we, whoa, fuck. But I had an idea. Sitting in the back with Darius, I decided we were going to push against each other. We were going to put all of our force against whatever surfaces we could find. And we closed our eyes and... We were okay. Andy asked me, you know, he said, we hit something. What did we hit? So I look in the back. Big ass rock. Well, we didn't fall off the cliff, so that's good. And he switches gears, we get some traction, and we go up the mountain. Everyone shook, but we were okay. We finally got to the top of this mountain. We went through the forest just a little bit until we got to a clearing. And he stopped and said, we need to take a break here. So we all got out of the car, we looked up, and we saw was Ludja. And it was the first time that I'd ever seen it in person. The 
near-death experience of falling off of the mountain into a ravine, I think helped heighten the experience. I was just so happy to be there. And then we all got back in the truck and we took it up that mountain to the top of Bazledja. We went around the building and we learned that there was a road that connected directly to a highway. And we could have taken that the whole time, but Andy thought it'd be a fun joke to go through the mountains. I'm not sure if he ever changed his mind considering that the path we took almost killed us. But I think it was worth it. I think it was a very memorable experience. So we're all standing right at the stairs at the very bottom of Bazledja. Everyone's trying to get some good photos, angles this way, angles this way, maybe a Dutch angle or two. I'm trying to get a perfectly symmetrical photo from the ground. I'm trying to get really, I'm trying to get really, really low to get this photo. The problem is that there is cow shit everywhere. But I didn't really let that stop me. I'm down here and I finally get this shot. I was laying on a cow shit for like 15 minutes trying to line up the shot. So we go up the stairs and we find out that the front doors are locked. Completely locked. Impassable. But there is a side door that we go into and we discover that there are other people there. And when we went inside and we saw that it's essentially just a husk of tattered remains, the rooftop which was once copper plated has been completely stripped since the fall of communism. The enormous mosaics all over the place are falling apart but it's it's a beautiful building with stunning views so after exploring the main auditorium exploring as much of the basement as was accessible at the time Andy told us that we were going to go up the tower for lunch it's raining now but we'll finish this up we'll finish this up right now so we had to climb the tower now the tower is 230 feet, which is about 23 stories tall, and the elevator is long dead. It's completely useless. But it's not stairs that we had to climb. There were these stair-like ladders. They were ladders that were just slightly at an angle with large platforms and handrails to climb up. But it was pitch dark. With the exception of one or two flashlights, you had to kind of just feel your way around and find the ladder for each and every section. Occasionally there were these tiny pinholes of sunlight coming through, but they didn't help you see at all. After quite a while of climbing, we get to a hatch. We open up the hatch and there is the sort of command center at the very top of the tower because the tower was used throughout the years for a number of different things, including radio communications. So there's about two stories of area that we were just exploring, taking a break up there because we were tired at that point. And we could see the Red Star. This was one of the largest Red Stars that the Soviet Union had ever built. It lit up at night back in its heyday, and it could be seen from other countries. That's how bright it was, and that's where it was designed to be at, at the peak of that mountain being as bright as possible so it could be seen for miles around to signify the strength of communism. And then communism fell, but that's a different thing. Now, I ran into an issue here. I looked through the center of that star and I could see the mountains. I could see the beautiful side that we were going to see once we got up there, but my issue was that I don't have a fear of heights, but I do have vertigo. I start to lose my sense of balance when I get up to a certain amount of, to a certain height. But I didn't let that fear control me. I opened up the hatch and was the first one to get onto the roof. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do this. That I wouldn't let the vertigo control me. And two, I wanted to get some photos before anyone else was up there. Uh, I actually sat over the edge. There's no safety rails in this abandoned building. So I sat and let my feet dangle over the edge and I kicked them back and forth like when I was a child because I kind of felt like a child. I was so happy and carefree and I'm up over 200 feet in the air looking across miles and miles and miles of the Balkan mountain range in every direction. We spent an hour or two up at the top. We had lunch. We talked about 
what else we were going to do, you know, during our travels. And the climb back down was pretty bittersweet for me. I spent five years of my life imagining this building and building this fairy tale around it in my mind that I wasn't sure if it would match. And it actually met up with it perfectly. It was exactly what I needed in order to confirm to myself that travel was what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to experience these weird and unusual places all over the world because weird is part of my life. It always has been. I've always been weird <laughs> and I like it. And I knew as we were getting back in the truck and heading back to Veliko Tarnovo that I wouldn't see the building in person again for a very long time. And I was glad to find out later on that there was a movement in Bulgaria to immortalize it, to renovate the building and turn it into a memorial of Bulgaria's history, especially Bulgaria's communist history, to remind the people of what had happened and how far they had come afterwards. Because that building, that building has a troubled history and that history doesn't deserve to be repeated, but the building itself and what it can represent that deserves to continue. I hope you liked the story. Uh, it is, in fact, the happiest day of my life. They don't happen very often, so I'm glad I did that. If you're interested in learning more about Bezledja, you can visit bezledja-monument.com.